a large model showman's engine part 68, the water gauge protector, cutting and machining the basic parts. You can see on screen at the moment my digital vernier caliper and also the parts from the water gauge protector that I bought via eBay. This job is going to be a little bit odd, I'm making it up as I go along. The water gauge protector that I'm about to make does not ever need to be removed, because it's not going to have any glass in it. It's literally a water gauge protector, to protect the glass tube from the impact of any firing irons in the close proximity. Just to digress for a moment, behind the bandsaw I have some short pieces of pipe that are found in the garden, and I use these for holding pieces of bar which includes the pieces of brass that I bought, which will form the guides on each corner of the protector. On my protector, I won't need to mill the guides for the glass because I'm not going to use any. The first thing I need to do is turn down the existing nuts that hold the water gauge in place. I'm not removing much material from these because if I do that, they will fall from together. This one is the bottom water gauge nut and I need to remove a little bit more metal from this one than I do with the top one. I don't like a lot of sharp edges on metal parts near where my hands usually are. Once I turn the bottom nut and remove the sharp edge, and the turn part needs to be a bit shorter on the top nut. Water gauges on traction engines really do worry me because they don't fasten into the back head of the boiler like on a locomotive. They usually connect to the boiler with quite long extension pieces, which is not good news for the gauge glass, as the glass is definitely not going to bend. This water gauge has a piece of angled brass at the bottom, and it bolts to the side of the bunker. You can just about see it in this clip, and because this bracket is quite thin, as I make this water gauge protector, I'm very keen to make sure that it remains a lightweight structure. Because the gauge protector doesn't need to be removed for cleaning, I can make it as a permanent fitting to the two nuts, which should help to keep the water gauge fittings in line with each other, making the entire water gauge more rigid. This pair of water gauge nuts may need a little bit more machining. I'll see what happens as the job develops. I cut a piece of brass using my bandsaw, but unfortunately it's a bit thick as were some of my past girlfriends, but of course not all of them. I'm using a slot drill for this job, and you will notice that I'm always going towards the work, never away from it. What I mean by that is the cutting edge of the cutting tool is always moving towards the metal that's been cut, never like this. Apart from the little bit at the end, I'm not cutting going in the backwards direction, I'm just moving the tool back to reposition it to take the next cut. If I was a trained engineer, I would probably use some parallels for this job. These are accurately machined pieces of metal that you put underneath your work to keep it level. I never use parallels for two main reasons. The first being, I don't have any, and the second being, I presume that most beginners don't have any either. This piece of brass is sat on two pieces of hardwood, and before starting the cutting operation, I tap the brass down onto the hardwood in the vice jaws using a soft hammer, and this gives a very tight fit. And I'm fairly confident that when I finish milling this piece of brass, it will be the same thickness from each end. In this clip, you'll notice that when I was milling, I missed a bit, so now I'm going back over it with a very light cut, which not only levels the part off, it removes any bits that I missed. I really would like a much better milling machine, but I keep this one for the simple reason I make tutorials and once again, just like the parallels, most beginners do not have fancy, large, expensive milling machines. After the fine cuts, the finish is OK, but it's going to be cleaned up on the belt sander anyway. This brass part is going to be cut in half and machined perfectly square. Then I will be able to fit it into my lathe to bore the holes in the two pieces of square brass to accept the nuts that hold the glass in place. Here's a piece of brass after I cleaned it up on my belt sander, and it's looking OK. So I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use some marking out fluid. Here's the stuff that I use, and this was sent to me by a kind viewer. It's got a built-in brush, which is a bit on the coarse side, 
but in no time at all the part is now blue. Whilst this was drying, I had a look at the piece of metal and realised it was a bit too thick. I'm determined to make this gauge glass protector as light as possible, but it still needs to be quite a tight fit on the nuts that hold the gauge glass in place. I am aware that there needs to be a little bit of movement to allow for expansion and contraction when the engine is hot and cold. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.